The Trinity exposed number 15. The great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Here's another good one. Another proof that Jesus Christ and God the Father are one and the same being. They can split off. Body and soul can split off, certainly. But they are the same being. Not two separate persons. The King James Bible does not teach that. But check this out. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 and 14 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, so God the Father and Jesus Christ are coming back for Christians. Keep reading. Look at verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Wait a second. There's four singular, what you call personal pronouns, I guess, four things there. Who, himself, he, himself. But two, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, two are mentioned up in the preceding verse. Now, how does that work? If you say, well, God, the Father, and Jesus Christ, the Son, are separate, that there are two different beings here in, in verse 13, then why does it go on to say singular references? Actually, uh, no, if you, believe, if you believe the King James Bible and you believe in the biblical Godhead, you'll realize it's two titles for the same being. All right. How do you know? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Great comfort to you if you are saved. You know that you're going to be going up before the time of Jacob's trouble gets started. But look at this. Titus, 3, 4, Titus 2, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 13 says, uh, And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, to get the context. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend with, from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. That's interesting. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Not the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Two different beings. The Lord. And it's interesting because Jesus is coming back there. That's who the Lord is. That's what it's talking about here. I'm going to prove that in just a minute. Jesus is coming back as the Lord, we're going to say, there's the Lord, but ironically, it's the trump of God that sounds. The trump of God, the word trump, means the voice of the trumpet. It's a voice that John hears in Revelation chapter 4 saying, come up hither. Interesting. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, John chapter 10. Let me tie this whole thing together. Verses 14 through 20. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Jesus is speaking here. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. The appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. With the trump of God. You see? The Lord himself shall descend. The trump of God. They shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. One shepherd? No, there's there's two. And then and the third day with the Holy Spirit. You know, he's a separate person. No, there's a one shepherd. Verse 17. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life that I may that I might take it again. Hmm. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. You see, well, you're trying to make Jesus and God the Father the same. Well, they are in terms of one being, but they're separate in terms of body and soul. Not that hard to figure out, really. I mean, to explain it and exactly draw it out or something, well, yeah, the mystery of godliness is great, certainly. But to understand how the thing works, it's really not that hard if you're saved. Verse 19. And here's the whole point with all this Trinity versus Godhead stuff. Look at this. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. Did you know that this Trinity versus Godhead thing, there's division that's caused by it? You say, well, then we should avoid it because it's divisive. Uh, no, because truth divides. And what's happening right now is you're having a tremendous division 
between those who are truly saved. They'll look and they'll say, yeah, you know what? The Bible doesn't say Trinity. Huh. And it comes from the Catechism, the Roman Catholic Catechism. I've seen the proof of that. And when you actually sit down and you start to think about it, it really doesn't make any sense. And Bible-believing Christian will say, you know what? I'm going to submit to the Word of God. And I'm going to follow the Bible's teachings. And this Trinity concept, there's all kinds of problems with it. You have to add all kinds of things. And you, again, you study the Roman Catholic Catechism. They're openly saying that to make their Trinity concept work, they have to borrow from philosophers. You can't teach the Trinity directly from the King James Bible. You have to add words. I can teach the Godhead not one problem on earth right out of the King James Bible. It's a division between saved and lost. There's a lot of fakers out there. They come out and they, well, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. And all of a sudden they get some scriptures put on them about the Godhead. Jesus is God the Father. They're the same being, the same person, singular. And all of a sudden, whew, off they go. And what do they say? Verse 20, And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Exactly like a lot of you people do to me. Mm -hmm. You see, if Jesus Christ is just some kind of a separate God than God the Father, well, it really would have been, yeah, whatever, you know. But he's walking around and he's saying, I'm God the Father. That's what he's, you know, over and over and over again. You know, they're saying, you know, show us the Father and, and tell us about the Father. Well, you know, who's your Father and whatever else. And Jesus is saying, if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And all these scriptures right here, the great God and our Lord Jesus Christ are going to be there at the appearing. And yet it's singular. The sheep hear his voice. The trump of God sounds. We're not getting up there to meet two. We're going to be there when we go up into the clouds. It's singular. The Lord is going to be there. I can't wait to see him. Can you?